string ka e i a ring a sa ka ha la ring sa ka la ring sa ha ein kling ring string Namaste. So I'm really trying to get back to my music. <laughs> But this topic of the uh, Turiya keeps coming up. Someone sent me a message last night asking, how do you enter Turiya? How do you get into it? You know, what is the technique? And well, I could say, If you're doing meditation regularly, it will reveal itself. Huh? But for those who insist on thinking about stuff, <laughs> yeah, I can explain it. So here goes. We saw in the series on Drig Drishya Viveka that what we call consciousness is simply a reflection of the awareness, the unconditioned, non-dual awareness of Brahman, the self, uh, the real self. <laughs> That gets reflected by the intelligence, the mind, and of course the ego and the senses. And this diagram shows how that is. So depending on where the reflection occurs and how we view the reflection, we experience different kinds of consciousness. And of course, the three main types of consciousness are waking, dreaming, and sleeping. But there's a fourth type of consciousness. That's called Turiya, which simply means the fourth. Why? Because it's inexplicable. And it is the bridge or the connection between the different states of consciousness. Like when we go to sleep at night, we go from waking to dreaming. Then later on, we go from dreaming to deep sleep. And the reverse on awakening, we come out of deep sleep, we dream for a while, and then we become aware of the external world. We call that waking up. <laughs> But actually, of course, it's just as much of a dream as dreaming sleep, but it's just more permanent. So we think it's more real. huh? No, because anything that has a beginning also has an end. So if waking consciousness has a beginning, like when we wake up in the morning, it also has an end, like when we go to sleep. Therefore, it cannot be the real consciousness. It's called conditioned, you see? It's conditioned by our state, whether we're waking, dreaming, sleeping, whatever. So, all right, what is the real consciousness? Well, the real consciousness is that which includes all the three normal, ordinary states of consciousness, and which forms the bridge between them. Think of it like a house. Huh? Maybe a house has three rooms. Actually, my house has three rooms. <laughs> Isn't that something? And to get from one room to the other, you have to go through the hallway. The hallway, actually the whole house, is like Turiya. And also the hallway, because the hallway isn't part of any of the rooms. See, it's separate. But it's a means to get from one room to the other. It's the connection. And it's also the whole house. Because it contains all the three other states of consciousness. Conditioned consciousness. Now... Turiya is still conditioned because it's still duality. But it has the advantage of not having any beginning or end. 
as long as you're alive, the Turiya is active. And when we switch from one state of consciousness to another, we go through Turiya, even if it's just for a moment. And, and this is called the Sandhya, or the joining, the, the boundary between the different states. So, all right, now that we defined our terms, <laughs> how do we get from one or the other of the states of consciousness into Turiya? Well, the secret is there at the boundaries. The boundary between waking and dreaming, the boundary between dreaming and deep sleep. See, these are the boundaries of consciousness, and this is the time when Turiya becomes active. Actually, it's always active, but we're just not aware of it. Because we're, we're <laughs> conditioned by the idea of the ego, individual self, and we don't see these different states of consciousness coming and going. Actually, all three states are active all the time. Uh, if we could observe ourselves objectively, we would see that so-called waking consciousness is nothing but consciousness of the senses. And the Buddha defined it this way. He says there are six types of consciousness. Seeing consciousness, hearing consciousness, smelling, tasting, touch, and mental consciousness. So these six types of consciousness are all the types of consciousness that we call waking. And then in dreaming consciousness, this is simply awareness of the memories and thoughts and desires of the mind. So actually, while we're so-called awake, <laughs> we're also dreaming because we're thinking. And this stays with us all the time. Huh? You can even daydream. Or if you notice, if you're thinking about something, you can lose awareness of the senses. You can be drawn into the mental world of dreaming about whatever it is you're thinking about. And that's dreaming. It's not any different from the dreaming that happens when you're so-called asleep. <laughs> because it's a focus of the consciousness on the mind alone, without the other senses. Then, deep sleep is ignorance. And who can say that they have no ignorance? Huh? Everybody is ignorant to one degree or another, <laughs> some more than others. <laughs> but ignorance is something that we have all the time. We couldn't deal with it if we had to be aware of every single sense impression, every single uh, datum, that comes in through these six senses, we'd be overwhelmed. And this is why we create language and symbols and abstractions. Huh? Like I can say, this is a microphone. Huh? You can't see it. So this is a microphone. But actually, if I look at it and observe it carefully, it has so many different parts. They all have different colors. They have different colors and lighting on the edge than they do in the middle. Huh? And this is the, the little uh, on off button is lit, you know, it's glowing red. And then it's got this foam cover to prevent wind uh, noise in the, in the soundtrack and so on and so on. It's a maze of detail. And then in the camera, boom, there's all these reflections. I mean, it's just too much information. So we make an abstraction. We say, that's a microphone. And we forget about it. Huh? We don't have to become aware of all the details. So it's the same with consciousness. We make an abstraction saying, waking, dreaming, sleeping but they're actually just different phases of the same thing, which is awareness reflected in the conditioned state of the jiva. So, okay, now that we have examined the whole field, how do we actually get into Turiya? 
Well, the best way is when passing from waking to dreaming sleep or from dreaming to waking in the morning. The morning is really the best time. Unless, like happened to me the other day, goddess wakes you up in the middle of the night <laughs> and gives you a spontaneous, amazing experience of this Turiya. The thing about Turiya is that it's extremely pleasant. It's hard to describe how it's pleasant because it's not the same kind of happiness or pleasure derived from the senses or even the mind because it's based on consciousness. And consciousness is, of course, the essence of everything. So you have this feeling of like, oh, this is it, this is everything, you know? So what I do, either falling asleep at night or waking up in the morning, I concentrate my mind. A mantra is very helpful for this. I use the Mahasodashi mantra, or in the experience the other night, the Chamunda mantra. But any mantra that you are uh, habitual in using, because it has to run automatically. Uh, you have to be so familiar with this mantra that it just goes on by habit. You don't have to make any effort. Why? This keeps the mind occupied. You know, the mind is always interrupting and it's really hard to reach concentration. So by giving the mind a mantra to chew on, you know, it's like giving a dog a bone, keep him out of trouble. <laughs> then one concentrates the mind on the consciousness itself. And we covered this in detail in the Secret of the Golden Flower series that you uh, become aware of awareness. You become conscious of consciousness. Now, when you have done this nicely, you will see a glow. You will see a light. And this is the light of meditation. This is the light of consciousness, the light of Brahman reflected in the mind. The mind has been purified by the mantra. And when the unconditioned consciousness is reflected in the purified mind, there is a beautiful effulgence, a beautiful glow, a light huh? that has a certain kind of sparkly quality. It's really hard to describe. It's composed of many, many, many individual sparks. Okay? Or at least that's the way it seems to me. <laughs> anyway, you see this glow. And this glow, this consciousness, this is Shakti. This is the Chit Shakti, the, the power of consciousness. So at this point, because I've been chanting Shakti Mantra for so long, then I relate to her as my mother. Uh, with great affection. Now, as it turns out, when you look at her with great affection, she moves closer and becomes brighter. And, of course, the mantra is going in the background, right? So that's your waking consciousness. And then you may also start to see visions. You may see the mother's form. You may see some geometric designs or something. Uh, the other night when I had that extraordinary experience of Turiya, I was seeing this form, which is like, sort of like a hypercube. The inside and the outside are somehow one. It's very strange. <laughs> it's a four-dimensional or, or higher-dimensional um, solid. So the inside isn't really different from the outside. It's really weird. Anyway, I was seeing something like that, you know, like one of those M.C. Escher drawings, you know, <laughs> with all weird angles going off into different dimensions. And um, at the same time, the whole drama was going on in deep darkness. 
like unlimited space. So this is the deep sleep consciousness. So the, the waking consciousness was there in the mind chanting the mantra. The dreaming consciousness was there in the visions. And the deep sleep consciousness was there in the surrounding environment, which was just blank, completely silent and empty. And how can I explain it? By looking at this light from a certain angle, huh, that's the only way I can explain it, you realize that, that I am the consciousness, I am the Brahman, I am the awareness that's being reflected, I am actually Shiva. And at that point, the union of Shiva and Shakti occurs. And well, that's just indescribable. Huh? It's, not, it's not sexual, it's not erotic, but it's extremely ecstatic and deeply loving, resonant with the deepest aspirations of the soul. So, you know, I, I can't compare this pleasure to anything else. It's just simply beyond. And you can cultivate this by your meditation practice and by observing yourself, observing your consciousness and how it shifts between these different states. And in the middle between the states, you'll find the Turiya, which is the consciousness that leads to the Ajatavada, huh? and the completion of full self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.